All right, got the truck in the garage again. I just uh, ordered this airbag system. Part number 60902. It's a super simple, basic bladder system. They'll go in the coils and just have air chucks on the end of each. There's no, like, I don't have a controller or a compressor hooked up to this yet. Super simple, but I've been carrying some heavy loads, a couple heavy trailers, and it was squatting a little bit. So this was 90 bucks, so I thought I'd try it out. So here's what it came with, a couple bladders, polyurethane, some hose, hose clamps, looks like two thin plates, sticker for the deep freezer, a couple shader valves and stuff, and instructions. Alright, truck's jacked up, wheels are off. The instructions basically say squeeze this through the coils after figuring out what orientation you're going to have the air hose come in either from the top or from the bottom. If it can't be routed through then it says to drill a hole. Got to figure that part out still. I was going to just take these two bolts out, drop this arm and pull the coil out just like I did to put the uh, lift spacer in there. But we'll try it the way the instructions say without taking all that apart. Well I quickly found out squeezing it in the coil like the instructions said wasn't going to work. So I had to take out these bolts like I thought. Um, this inside one is slightly longer then this one, this kind of bows out a little bit, so can't really mix these bolts up. One's longer than the other. Um, and you literally just push this down to pull the coil out. Here's that aftermarket spacer that I put on, and then this is the one-inch subframe drop pucks, as you can see. So it's a subframe drop and a coil spacer. I'm going to take the coil out and I think I'm going to have to either drill the top or bottom to get an airline in there, probably the top, so an airline won't rip off from the bottom. Okay, sweet. I got my airline here. The A-arm is actually hollow. This is where the bottom of the coil sits. Here's that aftermarket spacer with the factory rubber gasket. I fed the line through. The airline comes up right here. These edges are pretty darn sharp. This one's okay. This is pretty sharp. I might just hit that with a file. But I also found in my junk drawer some wire loom uh, protector. So I might throw like a couple layers on the hose just through there so it doesn't rub or any other places it might rub on the truck before I zip tie it all in. So I messed up bad. Um, when I took the spring off, I marked it top, even though I just decided I wanted to put the air hose on the bottom, I just shoved it in because I got excited. So now I'm having a heck of a time getting it out to flip it around, so this bladder is actually really stiff and hard to move. Uh, squeezing it with your hands and stuff and trying to squeeze it out, so I ended up using um, this strap, I put one on the top, scooched out a little bit, put a second one on, took that off, and I'm just moving them down little by little with a little bit of soapy water, and it's uh, actually coming out now, but stupid mistake, I probably honestly could have been almost done by now if I didn't do that, I've been trying to get this out this whole time, but my mistake. Alright, I got two layers of that wire loom on here for just this section that's going to go through the lower A-arm. Um, I took a file to the inside and 
top of this lip to take off that hard edge. So it really shouldn't be sharp there rubbing anymore. And I'll probably route it up along this. So obviously this is out of the way of the suspension by the factory. There's already a heat shield on here. There's two little heat shields provided. That's what those little plates are for. You could bend them, attach them to wherever you need. Um, so we're going to do that. So here's the plan. I routed it backwards since I'm going to call this the working end. has the wire loom shielding on it. Um, don't get ahead of yourself. Don't forget this little hose clamp. So the hose clamp needs to go on. I gave myself a lot of slack. I already put the spacer on and I have a little yellow mark, alignment mark, a paint marker, let's see, there it is. You can see it's off. Make sure you line that up so your spring and spacer go on the same way as you took it off. I'm going to put the hose on with the clamp and then just kind of shimmy everything in place and suck out the slack and then all the portion in the A-arm should be protected and then we'll move on from there to the T-fitting. I got the jack under the arm now to snug everything up. You see my yellow alignment marks on the bottom. My spring is touching that little stop on the rubber spacer. The bladder needs a minimum of five pounds. Maybe you can see this. But it's loose in here right now. The hose is attached to the bottom. The hose isn't kinked. And then the portion that's coming out is protected by the wire loom. And I also put alignment marks on the top for that little rubber gasket. That's all lined up. I lubed it up so the spring could just slide over a couple of those little rubber teeth. But it's basically just jacking it up, put those two bolts back on, and put the wheel back on. And that should be it for one side. Boom, there it is. Alright, so the reason I went with this part number, the one I saw in the video was actually 60 or 60901 and the guy that did the overland build actually ended up putting a one inch spacer under the bladder which is not unusual that's very common it's better to go smaller than too big but he said going with this part number you get a one inch taller bladder and there's no need for the spacer so that's why I went with this one this side went a lot quicker pro tip when you're taking these bottom uh, a arm bolts out just put the jack underneath it to basically hold it in the same position as it's in because it's under spring pressure just slightly even with the wheel off um, so keeping the jack under there those bolts come out super easy you can push that arm down with your foot coil comes right out make sure the uh, Airline nipple is in the orientation you want it to uh, when you put the coil put it in the coil Same thing. I got the line running out the back of the hollow a arm. It has double wrapped um, Wire loom on it. I'm gonna run both these lines to the center with a t-fitting and route a single straighter valve over here somewhere. I'll probably uh, drill and put it like right next to the trailer connector or something like that. So I'll just have one. I don't need individual loading capabilities even though the kit does come with two Schrader valves. I'm just going to use uh, the T-fitting and just have one. So, Alright, here's the setup. I don't know how much it matters, but I tried to center bladders as much as I could. I went a little extra with the zip ties and wire loom, but 
I ran it to the back of the trailer plug. Zip tied it everywhere. I made the hose long in case I needed to change something later. That's why you can see that loop de loop. T fitting right there. Zip tied to the frame so literally nothing's moving. Both sides I have enough hose to pretty much reach the other bladder. And I put initially 20 pounds. It didn't fully expand, it's still not touching the insides, but the truck weight's not on it yet. I'm about to put the tires on and lower the truck and see what it does. I let a little bit of air out. There's about 15 pounds in right now. And that's where my Schrader valve ended up. It's drilled a 5 16 hole, like the instructions said. And it's kind of discreet out of the way. It's not going to get hit or broken off anywhere. So let's lower the truck and see what it looks like. It's on the ground, again about 15 pounds. It is a tiny bit higher than when I started with just 15 pounds. The bladders still aren't touching the complete inside of the coil, like it didn't balloon out, but it is holding it top to bottom. I was jumping in the bed a little bit to try to get it to settle a little bit. Might have to drive around and see what it looks like, it feels like, but might just run the minimum of five pounds like it says just for daily use and stuff and I'll try it out next time I have a load also this thing is my back rack it's upside down right now it's just ever so slightly tacky still I'll have to hang it somewhere else and let it dry tonight but that's going on tomorrow that'll be a different video Pretty excited about this as well.